Hello everyone. I'm just going to give a sec couple seconds for everyone to hop on. All right. So, my name is Allie and a lot of people know me as Allie G or Allie G Nail Artistry. And I am I'm here to show you guys a couple of 3D techniques. This past year I was in NTNA Nails, Techno Nails Next Top Nail Artist, and I placed top three. And in that journey, I learned a lot about creating 3D work and fantasy nails. So today, I would like to show you a little bit of these techniques. So as you can see here, I've created these 3D seashell nails. And with these nails, you can see that they can be worn as a nail, just on their own, or they can be worn as a necklace, as a piece of jewelry. So, I'm super excited, so let's just hop right into it. So, uh, just to save some time, I have gotten us started here, and we have the first half of the nail sculpted. But what you're gonna wanna start with is a tip, that is a stiletto shape, and that's what's gonna give us our seashell design. So, using white acrylic and monomer, we are going to begin. All right. So, you can decide if you would like to use the acrylic brush or the 3D acrylic brush. I'll probably be using a little bit of both, so I'm going to start off with the acrylic number eight from Ugly Duckling. So we're just going to grab a ball of white acrylic and to make sure I have a paper towel here, drain it out and we're going to place that onto the nail. Perfect. Just let that settle, let it do a little bit of the work for you. And then we're going to just butt it up against the next section. And what we're trying to do here is to create a diagonal, a diagonal shape, kind of like an oval. And we just want to take our brush, refine it, and keep on pushing it up as it starts to cure. Take this time to really refine it, and the more you can refine, the less filing you will have to do. So here we go, I'm going with my 3D brush, and this with the perfect little thin tip here is really good to get into that little crevice there. Okay, so once it starts to turn matte, then we know we can start working on our next bead. I'm going to pick that up with my... 3D brush because as we go down we're going to be using smaller and smaller beads. Place that, wipe it off, let it settle, and start to push it up. Butt it up to that last section we made. Okay. Perfect. So, as you can see here, it's still shiny. I am ready. It's shaped and ready to go, but I'm not going to put on my next section until this is matted down. Because if it doesn't turn matte before you add the next section, it's going to be really hard to add your shape because they're just going to melt together. Patience is key when it comes to 3D and fantasy art and anything nails, really. Okay. Let's get another bead. A little bit smaller this time. Place it down. Wipe off the brush. And start manipulating it into place.
Each section I like to make just a little bit thinner. Now with this size of bead, we will start the next section. Let that settle. See this one's kind of melting into that one, so we're going to define it with our 3D brush a little bit more before we butt this one up. And if you guys have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments here. I won't be looking at any of the comments as I work because I will get distracted, but I can come in later and answer all your questions afterwards. And I do know that the Ugly Duckling team is in the comments, so they are awesome at answering questions as well. Okay. And our last bead here. The last one is a little different because we're going to make it more triangular to fit the tip. Okay, perfect. And just remember that this part doesn't have to be absolutely perfect because now we're going to go in with a combination of our e-file hand file and buffer to make sure everything is nice and refined. So I'll just move this stuff out of the way and get everything ready here. Okay, we'll take the tip off for the filing part. Here we go. Still a little bit soft here. There we go. So I'm going to start at the top here. I've already done a little bit of the filing here, but I will show you up here as this part dries. So this tip here is the refiner bit from Ugly Duckling. It has a flat top and a sharp edge here, which is really great for getting right in to the crevice. You can see how that's going to really refine that edge. So let's get started. So basically what we're gonna do is line this up, get in there, and pull through. We're just carving in the design. parts the sides here we're carving in to the side to get that more of a, a seashell look Take your time to refine in all the lines. Yeah, a little soft, that's okay. There we go. The 
as you can see, I'm just using that corner of the file. You're just going to pull through. This technique can also be used to create a unicorn horn nail, which I have done in the past. And we can also do this for the seashell. Let's go in with our hand file and you're going to take the edge from the coarse side of your medium coarse file and get into those crevices there. And I also like to round up the corners and also file the surface to get it nice and smooth. And I'll go back with my refiner bit. You can go back and forth until you're happy with the shape. glove. There we go. Next. There we go. Perfect. Okay, so that should look something like that. And once you have it to this point, you can use a Ugly Duckling medium coarse buffer, starting with the coarse side. This is great because of the spongy texture. It's going to sink into all of the different crevices and really just smooth, smooth everything over. I like to get the back too, just so these edges and sides are nice and smooth. Perfect. Okay. Now with the medium, give it a one over buff. And that should be good to go. We can place it back onto our tip display. And I'm just going to take a wipe clean up any of the dust because now we're going to start painting and we do not want any paint or any dust in our paint. So we're going to start with white number 44. I've already put that onto my palette and then we're also going to use a mustard yellow number 166. Just a little drop of that. And a little drop of this beige number eight. What we're creating is just an off-white. So we really don't need much of those colors. Okay, so we're going to take our Ugly Duckling paddle and mix everything in. Perfect. So you could get it. You should get a color that looks somewhat like this. Um, it can be any variation of this color. Seashells come in all sorts of colors and shades. Okay. 
so once we got that mixed up, I'm going to take my Ugly Duckling ombre brush and start to paint. I like to use the ombre brush when I'm painting a mixed color instead of a gel brush. I just really like the flexible bristles at the tip. I find that that really helps get the color on nicely. So make sure you paint it on nice and smooth, get around all the edges. Nice thin coat. We're gonna be doing two coats of this, so keep them thin. We really don't want to ruin any of the refined edges that we just spent so long to create. Perfect. So we're going to put that into the Ugly Duckling lamp for a full cure. So while that is curing, I'm going to wipe off my brush. And we're going to create also a, another shade. And essentially we're just creating a more vibrant and darker shade of what we already have. So using the mustard yellow, the beige number eight, And also, we also want a little, little drop of number 65. It's a very dark brown. That much should do. Let's take our spatula duck paddle and we're gonna steal a little bit of this off white and mix it in. Perfect. So now we have our second shade created. We're going to take our tip out of the lamp and we're just going to do a second coat of our first color, the off-white. When you paint this on, be sure to not place it on too heavy. We already added, we with the base of the white acrylic, that really helps with the coverage. So we really don't need much paint. Okay. Good to go. Back into the lamp it goes. Okay, I'm gonna check the comments, see if we got anything going. If you have any questions, you can ask while this nail is curing. Okay. Alrighty, I don't know why no comments are coming up on my iPad, but that's okay. move that off okay back to the nail we're gonna take our tacky top and we're going to place a very thin layer over the entire nail this will help our next layer apply on nice and smooth It'll help with the blend. And the reason why I don't use the Schmelt It for this step is because the Schmelt It is gonna work too well. I don't want it to melt that much, just a little bit. So that's why the Tacky Top works awesome. Okay, good to go. I'm going to use the Painter Brush. And we're going to dip it in here. I'll put this in the, the frame. This is what we're, we're doing, the, the shells. Okay. So we're going to take this and place it at the base of each section. 
doesn't have to be perfect. Just apply it at the base. Perfect. Wiping our brush. Let's grab the ombre brush. And we're just going to fade this up. It's honestly effortless, super easy. I'm literally just tapping it on there to get our shading. And just like that, we have our shading. Okay, so we're gonna put that in the lamp, get that curing. So while that is curing, we will create our third shade. Okay, so all we're gonna do now is take number 65, our dark brown, and we're going to add it in here, about that much. Duck paddle coming in, mixing it up. A little bit darker. We'll add a little bit more 65. There we go. Perfect. That's exactly what we're going for. Now this time, we're not going to be blending it in. We're going to be doing more of a speckled effect. This is going to give us a little bit more texture and more natural that more natural look to our, our seashell. Okay, so we're gonna speckle, speckle, tap, tap, tap. I'm using my ombre brush, you could use honestly any brush that you wanted to use. It looks a little harsh right now, but give it two seconds. We're going to wipe off the excess of our brush. Using a clean brush, we'll go in with that tapping motion again. And this just diffuses everything. Perfect. Okay. Look at that. All done. Pop it into the lamp. We only need a about a 10 second cure here because we have a very little amount. I'm gonna clean this off and put it off to the side because we're on to our next step which is creating the middle of our seashell so first things first we're gonna be using builder base and we're going to create a not a dome quite yet, but we're going to just fill in a little bit of this crack so we have a, a flatter surface. I'm just going to place that down and then use my painter brush right here to just spread it out. This simply gives us a more even base where we're going to apply our crystal stone whatever you'd like to call it and we will cure that perfect so introducing our crystal palette again I'm going to use color 58 with this like mermaidy color. It's honestly beautiful. We're gonna just put a little bit of drop on the palette and back in with our painter brush. Honestly, I would have to say this is one of my top two favorite brushes. I use it for everything. Okay, we're gonna use this and we're gonna paint exactly where we place that builder base. OK. 
okay? You can make this as big or as small as you like. Looking good. Doesn't have to be perfect. Okay. Perfect. Okay, we're curing. And the next step is to apply glitter or chrome flakes. This is completely... Oh, no. <laughs> okay, well, I dumped my chrome flakes. <laughs> okay, that's okay. Of course. <laughs> okay, we're going to just take that off of the screen. There we go. We'll deal with that later. Leave it to me to be clumsy. <laughs> okay. Let's grab a little bit of our <laughs> chrome flakes. And we're going to just... To have a little bit on here. <sighs> okay. Okay, builder base. I'm having a hard time moving on from this. I keep giggling. <laughs> okay. Builder base on top of your little jewel, and this is what gives it the magic. I very much relate to you, Natasha. You said you're clumsy. Well, I might be extra clumsy. <laughs> okay, apply this builder base. Get a big amount on there and then we're going to use our painter brush to just get that all the way around turn it upside down let gravity do some of that work for you and there we go we got that perfect dome effect okay in the lamp right away get that cured so, wipe that off, and now we're going to need a little bit of no wipe, top coat, put it on my palette, grab it with my painter brush, and we are going to top coat this jewel here. Now, this jewel can be honestly anything you want. If you wanted to create like a rose quartz or maybe like an opal, like if you wanted to get some, some veining in there and, and really like hand paint a stone, that would be really cool too. I find the sparkles really do work well too. You could also get your own stone from anywhere, like an actual real stone and put it in there. I think that would be really pretty too. So. As that's curing, let's talk about the next step. We are going to need our 3D white gel. So this is a awesome product for when you're creating fantasy work. I'm gonna grab a little chunk out of here. And I have a little dappen dish with some water this helps it not stick. And I'm just rolling it in a ball. I'm gonna roll it on my hand. We're doing very similar technique to what Natasha taught us a couple days ago. We're just gonna be creating little ropes. So, my method of doing this, I like to take my two fingers and I like to roll and I kinda like to pull at the same time. And I find this really thins it out pretty quickly. We got that nice long rope. So now it's a little too long for my hand. I'm gonna place that onto our work surface here. I'm making sure there's no chrome flakes because they're everywhere now. <laughs> Grab a little bit of water and roll. We want this to be pretty thin. I'm using three fingers now because we're nice and long. Okay. And I'm going to cut this in half because it's getting a little too long. 
I'm gonna place one of these halves on my wet paper towel off to the side. Learned that trick from Natasha the other day. Oh my gosh, changed my life. So I have a wet paper towel over here on off camera. Okay. And continue rolling that, just make it nice and even. Perfect. Let's take our Omni tool and grab it up. Get those two sides to meet. And, oop, twist ever so gently. Be gentle, guys, with this. It's very fragile. So now we have a nice twist. So what we're going to do with this now is we're going to use it to go around our jewel. So just place this down and wrap it around. Okay, Get just enough. And we're just gonna chop off that extra. There we go. And I'm just pushing it in blending those two ends together maneuvering everything around just to where I want it perfect okay so we're gonna need some more ropes and I created some off camera so you guys don't have to watch me do that again and again so we'll grab one here, nice and carefully, one second, oh, I don't want anything to stick together, boom, there we go, okay, so we got another one, add some water to our fingertips, this is going to help it not stick, and I'm just going to be bordering the top of the nail here. There is no set rules on how I'm doing this. This is just a design that I came up with. You can make any type of design that you want. This is just to get this design however you want it. So we got a little bit of overhang, which is good. We're going to chop that off. with our trusty duck paddle. Taking that off. And we're just gonna start maneuvering it around, getting it to a shape that we want. Being gentle, you don't want to ruin that rope pattern we just created. And I like to kind of like stick it into the first rope that we made. It just helps with some for some extra adhesion. Okay, so we're gonna cure this into the lamp, full cure. We're doing this in two sections. So I'm gonna show you kind of what we're doing using this as an example. We have created this and we have created this, right? Next steps are to create these guys, but before we make these, we want to paint these ones first because it's gonna be very hard to get your paintbrush into those little crevices with these pieces on there. So let's do that right now. And I will show you what I'm using. It needs a really good shake. This is a product that I purchased from art supply store. It is called Brush and Leaf Liquid Metallic Finish. This is actually used a lot for painting frames and I discovered this product when I was in NTNA and I really wanted something that I could honestly like get the most metallic finish without using a chrome because chrome in some situations just isn't going to work. For example this. It's just you're not going to put chrome on here and make it work. It's going to get messy. It's 
gonna ruin the definition of the ropes so this is the best option in my opinion so we're going to take this and we don't need much we're just going to use the paint that is in the lid there and then you're going to take a brush i recommend not using your fanciest brush because we're going to need to clean it with some alcohol and acetone so i just use a cheap two dollar amazon brush i don't want to ruin my my beautiful ugly duckling brushes okay so this is going to get dipped in here, and we're just going to paint on the gold. I don't, okay, I'm going to fix this brush a little bit. Because it is cheap, we have some praying. Here we go. We're going to chop it, give him a haircut. Okay, we'll see if that works better. I think so. There we go. Much better. I remember before I discovered Ugly Duckling brushes, I used to have to give all my brushes haircuts. And then once I found Ugly Duckling brushes, I think they were just perfect. You don't have to cut them. They come perfect just as they are. Paint this on, being very careful to not touch the nail. Okay, holding my breath a little bit, so sorry for not talking. We're getting there. I find this part to be the trickiest part of the entire design. If you are not looking to purchase a product like this, you can mix in colors like such as this one I did black. I thought that that looked cool too. I really love the gold look as well, but I mean, whatever you want, you can do. Okay, for the sake of time, I will not sit here perfecting and polishing that forever. So, in the meantime, this needs time to dry. It's an air dry paint. I'm going to clean my brush right away or else that paint will get stuck in there. Using some acetone. Okay, so as this dries, we can use this opportunity to place some jewels. So I have the Ugly Duckling crystals here, as well as some stick it. And open this here. Perfect. So for the top here, I'm going to be using some of the flat backs. So let's place down or stick it where we want to place the crystal. I'm going to grab the biggest size, pop it there. The jewels really make 
this design. Everything I dreamed of. <laughs> okay, let's find a size. Perfect. And I don't have as pretty of a crystal dish as Christina does, but as soon as that becomes a thing, I am on it. ASAP. Because, honestly, anything sparkly, I am in. Okay, so we're just reducing the size of crystal as we go down. Filling it up. Just like that. And we will cure that. And by the time that is done curing, we will be ready to place our other ropes of 3D gel. Put that off to the side so I don't dump something else. Okay. There we go. Now, for this part, we want this end here, you see it comes to a tip, and then this end is like the loop part. Use this little tip end, and we're gonna stick it here. I'm just putting down a little bit of pressure, and I'm bringing it around to the top and connecting it, giving it a little bit of a push. And make sure there's water on your finger so it doesn't stick. This part can be super finicky, so just have patience. We're going to chop that. And place it on kind of overlapping this crystal and I'm gonna cure that curing as I go with this with these parts because they are very fragile <clears throat> okay should be good And add another one. Using the duck pedal to chop it ever so gently. Okay, so once that's on there, I like to, oops, blend the ends in just so they're sticking nicely. There we go. Cure that. And then we're going to need two more snakes of the 3D gel. And this time, we're not going to make them into ropes. We just want, we just want some long pieces of the 3D gel. Grab some water. using the, the fingers to pull apart a bit. 
and looks like we'll have enough for both sides here. So I'm going to chop that in half. Fix it up a little bit here. I'm going to put my other piece on our wet paper towel. And grab our tip. So this piece will go attached from the middle here. We're going to grab our uh, army tool here. to kind of create a, a loop, chop it off, and this point, when they're connected, we can kind of adjust as we go. I'm liking it right there, so I'm going to cure that, and we'll grab our other snake of 3d gel whoops perfect okay that should be the thickness we want oh wow i keep on dropping it okay that's okay grab our tip out same thing, just to the other side. Attach it in the middle. Put a little bit of water on the Omni tool. Find the place where you wanna attach it and just chop it off. Any excess, and then we're going to use that tool to fiddle around until we like where it goes. Perfect. Okay, in the lamp she goes, very last time, doing the 3D gel. So we're gonna go and move back to the painting. Okay. Grab our paint. This paint needs to be shaken up regularly, so make sure you shake it every time you use it if you do decide to use this paint. Okay, I'm gonna load up our brush. Where are we? There we are. And just paint on the gold. Make sure you get in all the angles, all the little crevices. Being very careful. This part is tedious, but I find it is worth the final look. For the black ropes, I just mixed in Ugly Duckling's art gel in black, and I added some acrylic as well to that mixture, so it then makes it a little bit more uh, how do I say it? Like uh, the viscosity tends to get more thin when you add paint to it. So just add a little bit of acrylic. Natasha explains it really well in her video of how she mixes together her art gel to make it colored. You can mix in any colors. Anything that you can imagine. The only limit is your imagination. Imagination. 
it is quite amazing what we can do with nail products these days. The amount of tools and products that we have available to us, you can create anything. Okay, that's shaping up nicely. We're going to call that done. And then we are going to apply a couple more crystals. So, we're just going to need to give it a second to dry a little bit because we don't want it messing or mucking up. So, as I get ready, I'll grab my stick it and the crystals. Okay, so as you can see here, we have these pointed back. And these are going to um, honestly elevate the design to a whole nother level. They're from Ugly Duckling. They're gorgeous, they're beautiful, and they're affordable. I just, I love these ones so much. I will never let myself run out of them. Okay, so we just want to apply that right here. A good amount of stick it. And apply it on there. Beautiful. See how that just finishes it off super nicely. I can't get over how pretty that is. One little jewel can make all the difference. Okay, we'll cure that. There's a lot of different paints and gold paints out there. When I went to the art store and I asked them what can give me the most true to chrome metallic finish and they showed me this stuff. It comes in a bunch of different shades of gold and it also comes in bronze. So I mean this stuff really does give that beautiful effect of without using an actual chrome okay take it out and all that's left to do is apply our top coat so what I'm going to do and how I'm going to do this because obviously we have a lot of we have a lot of crevices and things to get around we're going to apply our no wipe top coat to our palette and we're going to use my favorite brush the painter brush and apply it that way. So just apply that all here. Oops, we got a hair. Okay, it disappeared. Nope, it's here. Okay, got that taken care of. So brush that on, and then you can use this painter brush to get into those little crevices. Get right in there. Right up in here. You do not need to top coat this gold stuff because it's meant for frames. It is a finish on its own. I'm just going to get around the crystals. Get around the edges. And we're going to cure. So, we can stop there. Or, if you guys would like, I can show you how I made it into a necklace. I do have six and a half minutes left, so if you guys want, we can, uh, let's make a necklace. Yeah, let's do it. So, things you're going to need. You will need a little loop, and you will need a chain. So these things can be found at Michael's or anywhere that sells jewelry making stuff. That's just where I got my stuff. And then I will also be using the acrylic and my monomer. Beautiful. Okay. <clears throat> A jump ring. Okay, thank you. I thought it was called like an eye loop or something. Jump ring. Thank you. 
So we're going to use the back of our nail here. Turn this over. And grab our number eight acrylic brush. Grab some acrylic. And I'm going to place that on there. I'm going to let it set a little bit first, just so uh, we have better to work with. Okay, I'm going to blend that in a bit. And we're just going to place a little ring in there. There might be better ways to do this. If you're a jewelry and aficionado, you might know a better way to do this. But this is my MacGyvered way of doing it. Okay, once we have that set in, we can grab another ball of acrylic. Oops, okay. We got a little hair in that one. Next one. Take this and put it on top. And I find that this is super secure. If you want to take the extra time, and if you say wanted to sell these necklaces, I would recommend finishing up this backside and painting it. You could do whatever you want with it. You could even maybe um, you could even put someone's name on there, customize it. Stick it would also probably work really well for this. I just don't want to use my stick it for this because it is gold. It is holy grail to me. So acrylic is gonna it's gonna be uh, my option to use. <laughs> so once this dries, you can basically put the chain through, and then it creates a necklace. So it kind of peeks out at the top there. I think it's cute. I like the way it looks. So that is basically all we got going for today. I hope that you guys love this tutorial. If you want to, whoops, if you want to try this, please tag me. My Instagram handle is Allie G Nail Artistry. And yeah, I think this is an awesome option if you are not working right now. Um, I live in Winnipeg, Manitoba, and we are currently in lockdown. So since we can't work with clients, this is a great way to make some extra money, make some necklaces out of all your nail products. So thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate you all being here and I hope to see some recreations. I will talk to you guys later. Thank you guys so much. Bye.